I've always loved birds. But it wasn't until the beginning of this year with all the crazy stuff going on that I really paid extra close attention to them. I made sure I spent at least 30 minutes a day with the birds. It was always a, a nice, welcoming sign of spring, seeing all the birds return. But this time it was different. This time it, was, it meant more than just spring is coming, summer is coming. It was consoling and it was uh, hope-giving. Today I'm out in the yard filming these North American robins and uh, they're really fun birds to watch. They'll kind of hop around, they'll stop and kind of stretch their neck out. Here's one here. Check this out. Look at that. Robins are funny because they kind of tilt their head. You can see they're using one eye to kind of examine the ground, look for bugs. All the birds are fun to, to film and observe and, and spend time with, but there's one bird in particular that I have just been enjoying the most. Baltimore Orioles will migrate all the way up here from Central America, Mexico, and northern portions of South America every single year. If you find yourself in central or eastern portions of the United States during the spring and summertime, chances are you'll see one of these beautiful birds. Take some halved orange slices along with some grape jelly and put it outside your window. Before you know it, these birds will be visiting your place consistently for a daily snack. Every day that you can, put an orange slice out with some grape jelly because these birds will develop a habit. If they see that there is food readily available at your location every day, they will come to your place every day and you will see them. Shortly after the Orioles arrive, mating season is underway, and the air is filled with their crisp song, which is described by many as a sweet flute-like whistle. Orioles will plunge their closed beaks, they'll stab the oranges or grapes or whatever fruit they're wanting to drink nectar from. They'll plunge it in and then they'll open it once the beak is submerged in the fruit and all the juices will flood in and that's how they drink it. And this is something known as gaping. They'll do this. The female here, she really likes to put her left foot on whatever she's eating out of, whether it be the plate or the orange. It's so funny how these birds have habits just like we do. Look how she holds it with her little foot. Now jelly. Now she's gonna have some jelly. Huh? Uh, so funny.
This is the male Oriole, and he is very aggressively stabbing this orange. <laughs> you can see he's working so hard on it, he's getting a little light on his feet there. That's a thirsty bird right there. Orioles are extremely aware of their surroundings and startle very easily. Because of this, it's oftentimes said that these birds are more so heard than they are seen. As the season progresses, the Orioles still visit, but not as frequently. This is because many of them have found a mate and are preoccupied with nesting. By now, some of them even have nestlings that have already hatched. The young birds need lots of protein, so now is an excellent time to put out live mealworms at your feeder. You can really maximize your time seeing these birds by doing this. And once again, it's really important to show them that your place is where they want to be for all of their needs. During the nesting phase, both the male and the female oriole will gather food and feed their young. Now that the Orioles were undoubtedly stocking up on worms to take back to their young, I really wanted to find out where their nest was. Orioles weave them together from reeds, grass, string, any thread-like material they can find. Here, a male watches over his nest in this fantastic photo by Christopher Knox. Notice how intricate, very impressive craftsmanship. I really tried to pay close attention to the direction they were flying each time they left. Then I got this idea. So I'm waiting for the Oriole to come back. Up there is the feeder. There he is. So I'm going to follow him as soon as he leaves. You'd think it'd be easy enough to track a bright orange bird overhead in 4K resolution. Well, it's not. I don't ever find a nest, but this shot from the Phantom gives us a really neat opportunity to get an idea of where this bird's going. And there are two males at the feeder right now. Of course, I don't have my real lens. Look at there. I've never seen two males at the feeder at once before until today. They seem to be uh, in a bit of an argument over, <laughs> over the... Uh, I put mealworms out there. It's really difficult to see the birds on the screen, so... The drone's up there. These Orioles are already sensitive enough, so I wanted to make sure I was at least 50 feet above them to make sure I stay out of their flight path and didn't upset them. So obviously really grainy, probably extremely difficult to follow, but I had fun doing it, I guess. I just wanted to see if I could figure out where these birds were going.
One warm and sunny afternoon, I was drawn to the backyard by the continuous alarm calls of various species of birds, including the oriole. I had no clue what all this commotion was about until I took a closer look, and then it became very obvious. Everybody's upset about this, this hawk. A house finch. Everybody's worried. My experience observing the behavior of birds at this level of detail has been somewhat limited up to this point. But there's one thing that's been very clear to me all along, and that is birds can be extremely territorial during mating season. But I found it interesting that when a threat comes along that's this big, which is the red-tailed hawk in the tree, they all work together to drive out this threat. At least that's the way it looks. It looks like they all just kind of forget about each other and work together. And I think that's really cool. In this next shot, you'll actually see this male oriole take a stab at the hawk's tail feathers, a defensive stab. And it's really interesting. I did not know up until this point that orioles were so bold. It's impressive. After the hawk finally left the oak tree, the oriole continued to chase it across the sky. On that day, I learned just how fiercely dedicated these birds are to protecting their families, even if it means risking their own lives to do so. And I gained yet even more love and respect for orioles. For a couple of weeks, the male and female orioles would come and gather these worms and carry them off to wherever their nest was. I knew there were babies somewhere, uh, nestling birds, so I grabbed the binoculars and would do my best to kind of look around the neighborhood. Never did find a nest, unfortunately, but I knew they were out there somewhere. I wanted to put those worms out every single day in hopes that something special would happen. It's a known fact that if a pair of breeding birds discovers a well-kept supply of food, they'll lead their young to it. And on this rainy evening in early July, it happened. In the small tree 15 feet from the feeder, baby Orioles arrived with their mother. All young creatures are the same. Everything is a tempting curiosity in their bright new world. It's a true joy to watch them learn about their surroundings. Is this branch food? Is the airplane passing overhead a threat? The most sure thing in their life at this time is their mother. Just behind this branch, we can see the mother feeding some mealworms to one of her babies.
The young fledgling birds continue to explore their new world. The mother follows closely behind them, keeping watch from the tops of tall trees. It must be a nerve-wracking experience keeping track of them all. As the little family strays further and further from the yard, the mother continues to return to my tray of worms, gathering as many as she can in her mouth to go deliver them to her babies over and over again. Watch, just around the corner, here she comes. For several days, the young birds make visits to the feeders, just like their parents did weeks before them. It's such a crazy idea to think that these birds travel all of those thousands of miles and just so happen to choose my ledge on the back porch. It's just great. I can't wait to see him next year. In a few days time, the Orioles, along with many other birds, will begin their long journey south. And soon, the cold north winds will blow across the grayscale landscape. The skies will once again be silent, but the songs of birds will still be heard within for those who love and appreciate them. Those songs will be on replay, with eager anticipation, for next time, for another warm, life-giving spring.